Hi, I'm about to welcome to my channel Africa Every Day. For this episode, I'll be showing you some of the things that I actually play with as a kid. The toys that we play with and also some of the things that we actually used to compete among each other when I was a kid. What actually inspired this video is the video that was made by Mr. Mike at Atomic Stream. In that video, he made a toy that he played with as a kid. He made the toy you know, for my brand. And, uh, that video actually was very, very good, it was interesting. You can actually watch the video here. So he made that toy, a bird on on, uh, on a wooden uh, platform. I really love that video. So it inspired me to make this video. You actually be enjoying this video a lot because I have a lot of things that I'm actually going to explain, describe to you in this video. Special thanks to my patrons for making all this possible. Thank you so much, my patrons. You've been wonderful, you've been excellent, and very, very grateful to you. And special, special thanks to Mr. Mark Atomic Stream. He is the is everything behind this channel. You're wonderful in my life. Thank you so much. Without you, my patrons, all this will not be possible. You are the architect of this channel. I'm very, very grateful to you for that. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, some of the things that we act we played with when I was a kid, uh, we play with uh, vehicle tire, we play with uh, bicycle rims. You know, we used to roll the bicycle rim. Uh, we played football, which is uh, almost universal. I believe all children in the world, at one stage or the other, they play football. But I don't know about children in North Korea. <laughs> so we also play with. Africa star apple seed. We play with that too, but I'm actually going to be focusing on two main play things today. Just two. I'm going to be focusing on rubber band. We play rubber band and also traps that we used to make in order to catch pouch rats in bushes. So I'm going to be focusing on that. I'll be showing you some of the things how we used to use this rubber band to play. Actually, this competition. You have to win this. If you don't have it, you have to buy it. Yes. Either you steal your parents' money or use your food money to buy it. Yes, you buy this. We compete with this and you buy it if you don't have it. Yes. So like some kind of currency back then we were growing up. Alright, so I'm looking for the path of pouch rat because that is exactly what we use the trap for. If you look closely, you'll be able to see their path. Now look here, this is their path, you can see, they actually, they made this path. You see that this path is actually different from others. You can actually trace it, you can see that. So this is what we used to know, if pouch rats are actually, uh, they are available, they are present in an area or not. Once you see that path, we know for certain that pouch rats are actually available in that area. That's how we know. Okay, so for this one I want to prepare a trap. Now to make the trap, we'll get two tins. We'll get two tins, usually of this size or bigger than this, but it shouldn't be smaller than this. So we we'll get this. Then now uh, you look for a stick. This stick, probably of this size. You look for this stick. Uh, you can use small stick to do this too. Then now uh, a knife. You get a knife. For cotton base, very simple, and that is exactly what we want to make now. And now uh, a tube, we have a tube. This tube will serve like uh, for binding. You can see, there's an old car tube. All right, to do that now, I'm going to need like uh, a silver. I'm going to need a silver of this. We usually do it in pairs, but because uh, I'm the only one, I have to find a way to do it. But the thing is that we usually do it in pairs. And special thanks to Mr. Mike and my patrons for making this possible. Liam Lucas, I can't mention you all. Suzanne, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Michael, thank you so much for making this channel possible. Mr. Mike, a wonderful man. He, he, he treats me like a family. 
<laughs> but he has never seen me physically before yet he treats me like a family he's a wonderful man mr mike the next now is to create a lead a lead that is going to snap short a lead must be created that is going to snap short and to create that lead i would love to divide this to create the lead i would love to cut this i call this uh base here this bottom will serve as a lead for this i hope it works is it to work to serve as a lead for this is damn tough. Okay, I'll be using Milo 10 instead. Yes, Milo 10 is easier to cut than this nan. Oh my god, this is too hard. So this one is easier to cut. Yes! You can see that? This is the lead. The lead that will cover this. The lid that will snap shut and cover this and trap the parchment. All right, we have four holes now. We have this, 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 this. Okay. Now, at the bottom of the main the bottom of the main tin, we have to create some holes there so that when the pouch out is trapped, it won't, uh, it won't suffocate. So that air will be going in when the pouch rat is trapped. So, this is to allow ventilation for the pouch rat. Alright? So, the next step now is now to string up this. All right, so make it now. We have the hole that was our holes that will serve as ventilation for the pouch rat when it is trapped. Then we need to make a small hole here. I've actually done that. I've made a small hole here. Then this is like a pin of the grenade. This is very very important. A very very important part of the trap. This are like a pin of a grenade. Then you make two rectangle here, a smaller one here, and a bigger one here to now serve the job of holding it like this you see it will hold it in place like this that will make this to shut close this will shut close like that i'll also show you how that is actually done as simple as that now the next thing is now for me to tie this this must be tied around like this and that is where the the silver of tube that i cut this is where they will serve their purpose. This must be positioned to the incision. You see that? It must be positioned to this. Then you tie this. All right, uh, I've tied the two hands. You can see that? The two hands have been tied. So the next thing is now for me to place it here. Remember, you need to look for it right here. You need to position this longer part to this side. That is where the pin is going to be positioned. All right, this is ready like this. Once this is stripped to snap shot, pew! Then the patch rat is trapped inside. That didn't do perfectly enough. But it's to be perfect, the lid will be completely, the uh, tin will be completely covered. But this will still do the job perfectly. All right, so the next thing is now for me to position the pin. This pin must be well positioned. Now to do that, I need to prepare this stick for the pin. Now to do that now, it's very simple, now you place the pin, no, 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 oh God, <laughs> it, you work, you have no other option, you must work, you must work, no, any other option. Uh -huh, this is better now. 
I can actually, I can easily tie this. This is far, far, far better. I use uh, the first rectangle we hook to the thing, and the second one. So this is perfect now. Can you see that? This is perfect. Now look at it now. It is well set now. Then inside there, you can see the inside, right? Yes. That is where the food that we attract the pouch rod to be placed. On the sharp end of the pin, the pin in quotation, that is where it will now be put. Once the pouch rod gets in, nibbles the pin, then the pin will shake, then the whole thing will just shut off. Then the pouch will be trapped. Now for those of you that are actually sensitive over there, I'm talking about the vegetarians, this is Africa, you may, be sens you may not be sensitive to eating animals, but here in Nigeria and Africa, we eat animals. So there are two things we used to use it to do. It's either we bring it home to rear, usually I look for male and females, or we eat it ourselves. So that we eat it ourselves, or we rear it, or sometimes we sell it to those people that used to sell herbs and different kind of things used for making medicine and charm in Nigeria. Or you, 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 you'll be seeing the picture of their display. That is how... That is what we use them for. Now to sell this off, now it's very simple. Once I can position, let me see. I, I want to set it off now. Once you can position, look at this. Once you tap the pin, it shuts off. As simple as it is. That is how we make it. I don't know if you can see this, if the camera is clear enough for you to see. This is the path. You can see that this place is like a, is, is, is deeper than the rest of the ground. You can see that? Like this. The path goes from here, through here, through this bush, goes, goes here, and <laughs> to wherever that leads to. Right. So this is their path. That's how we, that's where we position the trap. Very very clean. So we trap them and we keep them to rear them so that they can multiply for us. All right, we have this rubber band here. You can see the rubber band. The in the rubber band, the most common ones is actually the yellow ones. That is why the red and the green rubber bands are seen like like our. They are still like a royal rubber band because they are not very, very common or like the blue rubber band. So I'm not going to show you how we used to play now. There are four ways that we used to play rubber band. So I'll show you all of them one by one. All right, to play the first one now, this first one that we play, this one we call it uh, Susu. Susu. Susu just means uh, like our dragon. We call it dragon like Susu that we played. Let's assume the opponents have this. And I have this. Now I want to play Sun Sun. Okay? And then you take one one. Like a uh, one one this now. You position it anywhere. You can just put it anywhere. Now to play now, the goal of who wins is whoever that places their rubber band over yours like this. Once you can make yours to go over, to go on top of this, you've actually won. Okay? We have player A and we have player B. Now to start now, anybody can start it. So to start the game now, you, fl you, can, fl you can only flick it like this, but you can't carry it like this. this. This one is not allowed. You see that? You can only flick it once, yes. You can only flick it like that. So the first person, you flick like that. Second person, you see that? I missed that. Then the next person, that means this person has won, okay? You've actually won now. Once it is on top of it, and you can actually see there's a space between the two. When they are overlapping, there's a space in between them. That is when you've won. So I've won this now. I just, uh, I take this. Then the opponent will have to bring another rubber band and we replace, uh, we repeat the whole process. So as I would do, and once you've won all the rubber bands of the opponent, the opponents, they have two choices. They can either go to where they are selling rubbers and buy, or they can actually buy from you. All right, now for this method now, the two opponents, they will come with their rubber band. You can see that this is my rubber band. So to play this now, 
our player A. Let's say player A now plays. Then player B plays. Whoever that throws rubber bands that lands on top of any of the rubber bands on the ground is the winner. For example, now our player B plays. No winner. Player A. No winner. That's how it will continue. That's how it will continue to go until we have a player whose rubbers lands on top of any of the rubbers on the ground, rubber bands on the ground. So this is a winner now. So the winner, we just pack all the rubber bands on the ground. That is how we play this and we win. And this is the most common or commonly played one because this one, you can easily win as many rubber bands as possible ones. So this is the most commonly our played ones. Another method that we used to compete, we used to play is uh, playing this type of one is played by catapulting it and we call it Lampharis. I don't even know the origin of the word. All I know is that we used to call it Lampharis. How do you play that? Is that by catapulting, you know, you catapult the rubber band. The farthest rubber, the person that has the farthest rubber bands wins. That's how we play it. This one is usually played by a uh, very, very, very small kid. So this is how we play it. You catapult, you expand it like this, and you release it in such a way that the rubber band will move forward. So the person with the farthest rubber band, uh, with the farthest rubber band wins it. Then another one is that uh, we will look for probably like uh, an object standing like this. An object standing like this, we place it on, uh, on the ground, then at the distance, we will be playing the rubber band. We will playing the rubber band. Whoever rubber band was able to go through the object wins the entire rubber bands on the ground. So this one is also played by those who have a large number of rubber bands. So you start you start throwing it like this. This is how you throw it. You throw it like this. Whoever rubber bands lands in between the object. It could be a stick. It could be... It could be a broomstick, could be one broom, whichever one we use. Whoever rubber band lands in between the stick wins all the rubber bands on the ground. So that's how we play that. If you have any question, please let me know in the comment section below. How you enjoyed that video? Please, if you enjoy, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And now, special, special thanks to my patrons for supporting my channel. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. And special, 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 special thanks to Mr. Mike at Tommy Stream. <laughs> hey, wonderful man. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful to you. I can never thank you enough. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to support me, you will see the link to my page and also to my GoFundMe in the description of the video. And also in the comment section, you will see it there. Thank you. See you next time.